Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today, we're going to have story time. This is the story of how Papa G-Force met Mama G-Force, and they got together, and they started dating, and then they, they fell in love with each other, you know, dancing, and, and finally, one day, they decided to get up in front of, you know, um, Reverend Mouse, and then they consummated the marriage. Nine months later, out popped baby G-Force. This is, okay, no, but seriously, guys. This episode is all about the all-new G-Force GTX 650 Ti. It's based on the GK106 core, just like the 660 Ti. And uh, I think, given its size, you're going to be pretty impressed with the results. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about baby Kepler's specs. So this is based on the same Kepler architecture as the GK104 GPU, is, which is the one you find in the GTX 670 and 680, or, you know, Daddy GeForce and Mama GeForce GTX. However, this is a toned down version of the Kepler architecture similar to the 660 Ti. So it's the GK106, which means you've got 768 CUDA cores, a 128-bit memory bus, and that is on the reference card with one gig of memory. However, board partners are welcome to add more memory to the card. It also runs at 925 megahertz. Unfortunately, GPU boost is not present on this particular card. You do get Kepler performance per watt, you do get Kepler performance improvements over previous generation cards, you get things like the chip itself supporting up to four displays, but you don't get GPU boost, and the other noticeable omission is the fact that SLI is not supported on the 650 Ti. If you want SLI support, you're going to want to step up to a 660 or a 660 Ti. Still uses the PCI Express 3.0 bus, and other than that, I think we've pretty much covered, oh, it should be noted that the reference card, so if you buy a reference 650 Ti, it may only have dual DVI out, so you're going to want to get a, an aftermarket designed PCB from one of the board partners, such as ASUS or MSI or EVGA, that has additional display outputs if you want support for that feature. At the end of the day, it all comes down to performance. So, okay. Here's the Fermi card, 550 Ti. Looks like a graphics card, you know, looks like a performance graphics card. Here's the 650 Ti. Honestly, come on guys, let's not kid ourselves. It looks kind of like a toy. It looks like a baby GeForce GTX. However, you know, like, look, look at this thing. See? Like, there. there you go, there you go. However, if you're a serious gamer, it's not about what your card looks like, it's about how fast it goes. We only tested a couple different games because we wanted to get some idea. This card's coming in at a higher price. It's coming in with a newer architecture, Kepler versus Fermi. How much does it smoke it by? At 1080p medium settings, which is really where a, an X50 Ti card is positioned, we're looking at more than a doubling of performance going from 550 Ti to 650 Ti. In crisis, we are looking at a doubling in performance at very high 1080p. So does it have it where it counts? The answer is yes. Now I think the conclusion for this one is pretty simple. Basically, by bringing in the 650 Ti in a better performance per dollar sort of range than the exiting 550 Ti, by bringing in better power efficiency, better performance overall, just generally better everything, the 650 Ti puts NVIDIA in a more competitive position in the market, the same way that all the other Kepler cards have done when they kicked out their Fermi cards that they are replacing. So basically, off with the old... Ooh, that was a little bit sort of hard. I hope this still works. And on with the new. We are now refreshed pretty much top to bottom from the 690 all the way down to the 640 with the Kepler architecture. And thank you for bearing with us with all of these NCIX tech tips about all these Kepler cards, but hopefully you found it as awesome as we have. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from your favorite detailer, NCIX.com.